Hi, my name is Amy Newman, and I'm a, an assistant coach for the wool judging team here at the University of Wyoming. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about classes, um, both commercial and breed classes. So first, we're going to talk about commercial classes. So we have some placing factors that we use in commercial classes. The first being weight. The second being yield. Third is fiber strength. Fourth is staple length. And fifth is character. So first talking a little bit about weight. So wool is sold on a weight basis. So more pounds of wool equals more money back to the producer. And as you can see on the left, we have a heavy, big outline, long stapled fleece. So obviously that will yield more pounds of clean wool, um, which equals more money back to the producer. On the right hand side, we have a smaller outline, shorter stapled fleece um, that is lower yielding and in turn, will yield less pounds back to the producer. And the middle two pictures are um, those two fleeces side by side. So you can really see the difference between the big outline, the small outline fleece, as well as their locks in the bottom picture as well. Okay, so our second placing factor is yield. So like I just said, higher yielding fleeces equal more pounds of clean wool. Obviously more pounds of clean wool equals more money back into the producer's pocket. So on the left, there's a high yielding fleece. It's bright, it's white, it's lofty, has very little dirt penetration, is long staple. Um, and you, you guys can obviously see it's bright and in white. Um, it has a little dirt penetration, but not much, but it's very long stapled. I actually have this fleece in front of me. Here's the staple uh, lock of wool for reference. And measuring against my middle finger, it's clearly over four inches, probably closer to six. Um, so that'll yield a lot of uh, clean wool. Additionally, it's a very heavyweight fleece. Um, and so typically we use the term lofty to describe fleeces that don't feel like they have a bowling ball in the middle of them, um, which would indicate a lower yielding fleece. So it kind of lifts off the table with not much drag. Um, and that's what we mean by lofty. On the other end of the spectrum, we have a lower yielding fleece, which is indicated in the pictures um, on the right. So we can see that um, this fleece is very short stapled. It's filled with a lot of um, lanolin or grease, as well as dirt penetration. Um, just overall, probably in the 30s as far as yield, whereas the fleece on the left would probably be closer to 60, 65% yield. So here's an example of a really short stapled fleece. This one is actually pretty clean, but Measuring it against my middle finger, you can see that it doesn't quite meet staple. This is a coarser fleece, so it needs to be at least four inches, and we can see it's not that. So our third placing factor is fiber strength. So first, I want to talk about um, a break. So a break, it looks like you have just taken scissors and cut the lock in half, and we can see that on the left-hand picture that's circled here. Um, there's It's a clean break, um, and this just equals... Uh, the producer gets a big discount at the mill when there's a break, and this is because something, when it's scour, carded, and combed, it creates more noilage. So basically, when it's carted through, the fleece breaks and some of it falls into onto the floor, and that's what we call noilage. So it's basically just waste. Um, on the other end of things, we have tender, which is indicated in the fleece on the right. And as you can see, it's a little bit more frayed as far as where the fleece so-called breaks. Um, and so it, may, it takes a little more force to actually get that fleece to split in half. Um, and it's not quite just a clean break. So we call that tender. But once again, a tender fleece will also create noilage at the mill. Um, and so regardless of if a fleece has a break or is tender, it receives the same discount at the mill. Next, we're gonna talk about our fourth placing factor, which is staple length. Um, and so here's a chart that indicates staple length requirements for each grade. Fine fleeces have to be at least three inches to make staple halves three and a quarter, three eighths, three and a half, and quarter and low quarter at least four inches. So um, the fleece that I showed you earlier, um, the long stapled fleece is a half, or a, excuse me, a quarter blood. So it needs to be at least three and a quarter inches. As we can see, like I said before, it's super long stapled, probably closer to six inches. So in that case, it would make staple. However, on the other hand, we have a coarser um, fleece here that's in the low quarters actually. So it has to be at least four inches. Measuring against 
my middle finger here, we can clearly see that this isn't four inches. And so that would be considered clothing. However, if this block of wool was instead not a low quarter, but instead a half blood or a fine fleece, we have something that's called French combing. And so um, this fleece would have to either be two to three inches or two and a quarter to three and a quarter inches to be in that French combing as opposed to um, clothing category. So our next placing factor is character. And here at the University of Wyoming, we like to think about that in terms of our three C's. So we have crimp, color, and condition. So starting with crimp, we can, it's hard to see in these pictures, but in the fleece on the left, it has very prominent crimp that is very easy to see. Um, and then the fleece on the right is kind of lax crimp. It's a little bit frowsier in its appearance. Um, next, looking at color, you can clearly see that um, the fleece on the left is the brighter white option. The fleece on the right is kind of the yokier or yellower, yellower appearing fleece that's just not as bright and white in its color. And then we look at condition finally. So is this fleece really picked over? Is it old it, or is it fresh? It's new. Um, not a lot of people have uh, touched it or pull box from it. Um, and so the fleece on the left indicates a really good character fleece and something that if you're on the collegiate side of things and you're going through the rail, you would mark good for character. Um, on the other hand, if you saw fleece um, like on the right, it's frowsy in its appearance, it lacks crimp, it lacks color, kind of is old, um, then you would mark that as poor charactered, um, in, at least in the, on the collegiate side. As far as for the wool judging kids, um, this is great for uh, questions or if you're doing reasons to just kind of take note of that's the bright white fleece, that's a yoke you're appearing, lacks crimp, poor charactered fleece. So next we're going to talk about breed classes. So our placing factors for breed classes are breed character, weight, and fiber strength. So our first placing factor is breed character. So I'm going to go through um, a couple of the main breeds that we see. First, from courses to finest. So first being the Corydale breed. It's uh, one of the coarser breeds that we see in uh, collegiate contests, at least in 4-H as well. It's around 25 to 33 microns. So in that low low quarter to quarter blood grade range. It's long stapled. So as um, I said before, since it's a quarter, low quarter, it has to be a minimum of four inch staple. It's bold crimped. So, um, and you can kind of think of this as a crinkle cut French fry like um, crimp style. So it's very, there's not a lot of crimps per inch as compared to a uh, tighter crimped fleece. So here's an example of Corridale locks of wool, as you can see, the crimps are very bold, almost French fry cut like. So next we're going to talk about the Columbia breed, which is a medium coarse breed. Um, it consists of a Lincoln on a Rambouillet, um, typically 24 to 31 microns, so 3 eighths to quarter blood range. Um, it's important to note that this breed sometimes is variable. Um, so as you can see, some of them can be three eighths, some of them can be quarter, just depends. So it's really important um, if you're judging a breed class with Columbia's to make note of the finest fleece, coarsest fleece, et cetera. And for these, they have to have a three to five inch, they typically have a three to five inch staple and obviously the staple requirements will be dependent on the blood grade. So here are Columbia uh, locks. So a little bit bolder styled crimp, um, but a little bit finer than the uh, Corydale that you just saw. Next, we're going to talk about the Rambouillet, which is a fine wool breed, typically 18 to 24 microns, so half to fine blood grade, three to four inch staple. They're known for being really tight crimped, um, very soft handling and should be pretty bright white. Um, as the fleece that I demonstrated earlier with good character, that's kind of what you should be thinking about when you think about a, a good Rambouillet fleece. And here is Rambouillet locks of wool. So as you can see, pretty tight crimped um, and finer in its fiber diameter. Next, we're going to talk about the Targi breed, which is a finer wool breed. It's uh, progressively gotten finer over the years. Typically, it falls in the range of 19 to 26 micron or half to fine blood grade. Um, staple length should be at least three inches, and um, these uh, sheep shear around an 18, 8 to 15 pound fleece. Um, just like the Rambouillet, they're typically tighter in their crimp style as well. 
Um, here's an example of a targi fleece. It kind of looks pretty similar to the Rambouillet tight crimped uh, finer micron. Finally, we have the Merino breed, which is a fine wool breed, 17 to 25 microns, fine blood grade, long stapled, so typically three to five inches, bold or tight crimped. It just kind of depends on the style of the Merino. Um, and they're known for being bright, white, good charactered fleeces. So like I said before, um, when you think of a Merino fleece, you, you typically should think of a bright, white, like really good charactered, um, bold crimped fleece. And here's an example of a Merino fleece, Merino locks, excuse me. Um, our second placing factor for breed classes is weight. And I'll keep this pretty short because I talked about weight earlier, but obviously heavier fleeces, regardless of if they're a breed class or not, um, you still want heavier weight fleeces, obviously more money back to the producer. Just a little side note about breed classes. It's important to talk about um, highly heritable traits. So this could be staple length, micron, um, yule, things like that, um, that if you were a breeder of this breed of sheep, you would want the, this fleece in your flock or you would want sheep like these in your flock. So it's important to note that um, highly heritable traits, um, like in a set of reasons, when you're taking notes, whatever, which is the main point of the Breed classes are breed character, obviously. So other factors that may influence your placings are crimp. Talked a little bit about this before, but there's a bolder crimp style, such as um, can be seen in a Corydale, the coarser breeds, as well as sometimes Merino. Uh, tighter crimped can be seen in Targi and Rambouillet. And typically some of our, you don't see this a lot in finer fleeces, but sometimes our coarser quarter, low quarter fleeces, sometimes lack crimp and are pretty frowsy in their appearance. Next, I wanna talk a little bit more about yield. So as we can see in the top picture, that's a high yielding fleece, free from dirt penetration, very little vegetable matter, pretty bright white in its appearance. It's a little yolky, but not bad. So that would be a higher yielding fleece. Now on the flip side, we have the bottom picture, which is filled with lanolin and uh, the dirt has stuck to the lanolin kind of creates like this mud-like crust on it, very low yielding, that's hard to wash out in the scouring process. Um, and so that would be a low yielding fleece. And typically we, we see our finer fleeces are lower yielding, heavier, or um, excuse me, coarser fleeces are higher yielding. And this is because if you think about the micron on uh, finer fleeces, the fibers are gonna stick together more, which allows for uh, more dirt penetration to get inside and become trapped rather than in a, a coarser fleece, um, the follicle, the hair follicles are bigger, obviously the fiber diameters are bigger. And so sometimes there may be dirt penetration, but it's easier to fall out. Um, it doesn't stay in the fleece as much. And so this is kind of just a little chart stating fine um, to low quarter um, in our average yield and normal range for each. Next, we're going to talk about purity. So is this fleece free from colored fibers, Kemp, or hair-like fibers? So we actually had a fleece in our uh, RAM test this year, which was very unique. Um, and that's the picture on the left there um, has a lot of Kemp in it, um, which is just a medulated fiber, kind of hair-like fiber. Um, and so <clears throat> these, when you bring them through the scour carding and combing process, um, these hair-like fibers or Kemp won't die. And so um, they producers receive a big discount for that, or sometimes the mill won't take those. Um, and similarly to black fiber, colored fiber, as you can see in the picture on the right, um, that those are harder to dye as well. They don't take up dye. And so that's a big detriment to the fleece if there are colored fibers in them. So just uh, keep a lookout for that. Um, make sure to talk it in your reasons, write it down in your notebook if you see something like that. Additionally, if you're collegiate and on the um, grading rail, if you see Kemp or hair-like fibers, colored fibers, then you'll mark that poor purity on your grading rail sheet. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about scoring and cuts. So each class is worth 50 points. The officials assign a class placing and cuts, and cuts determine the individual scores compared and compared back to the official. This table just kind of demonstrates um, uh, cuts, typical cuts. So one to two point cut is a difficult decision. So if you have a close top pair, close middle pair, close bottom pair, 
or a, like a close trio, um, those all can be cut one to two points, meaning that they can be switched kind of either way. And if you're giving reasons, you can kind of talk yourself out of it. Um, three to four point cut is challenging, but sortable. So typically, um, if there is like a more major weight difference, um, you can switch the pair, but it's not ideal. Five to six point cut is relatively easy. So if you have a really heavy weight fleece, a really lightweight fleece, that'd probably be cut five or six points. And then when you get to the seven and eight point range, which isn't seen very often, that's a relatively or an extremely easy decision. Walk up to the class, like some of the pictures I explained earlier, you have your big outline fleece, your small outline fleece, that class would probably be cut eight. Um, just an extremely easy, not close pair. So that's about all I have for today. If you need more info, links here to both our 4-H uh, wool judging contest website and our University of Wyoming wool judging website. Additionally, you can reach out to our head coach, Dr. Witt Stewart at witt.stewart at uyo.edu. Thanks, guys.